Welcome to Crime and Court. This is another episode in my Canton cover up series, Commonwealth versus Karen Reed. And we also talk about Turtle Boy in this case. Um, for today, we're going to be talking about the civil suit. This is, of course, the civil suit of the O'Keefe's versus Karen Reed and the bars that John and Karen visited that night. So this t- today, we're going to be reading through the Waterfall Bar and Grill's motion to stay and the O'Keefe's response to it. So let's get started. Please hit the like button if you don't mind. And we will begin. This is going to be relatively, you know, much shorter than my usual videos because not a lot to cover, but I just wanted to make sure that I brought it to you. So this is uh, the defendant's waterfall bar and grill doing business as waterfall bar and grills motion to stay pending resolution of the related criminal trial. So now comes the defendant waterfall bar and grill and respectfully moves for a stay in this matter pending the outcome of the related criminal case Commonwealth versus Karen Reed, which is scheduled for trial on January 27th, 2025. Waterfall maintains that staying this matter in its entire in, in its entirety pending the criminal trial will preserve the parties and witnesses resources, promote judi- judicial economy, and carries little risk of prejudice to the plaintiffs. Waterfall further relies on its memorandum of law in support of its motion to stay, filed simultaneously herein, wherefore the Waterfall Bar and Grill respectfully requests that this court grant this motion and stay, this matter pending the resolution of the related case. So here is their memorandum of law to support the motion to stay. Now comes the defendant, Waterfall Bar and Grill, and respectfully submits this memorandum of law in support of its motion to stay, this case pending the trial in the related criminal matter captioned Karen Re- Commonwealth versus Karen Reed, the criminal case, which is currently scheduled for January 27, 2025. Waterfall submits that allowing discovery to proceed at this juncture and on the eve of the criminal trial will duplicate resources of both the parties and third-party witnesses that would be required to testify in both matters. Conversely, a brief stay pending the outcome of the criminal trial will preserve resources, promote judicial economy, and carries little risk of prejudice to the plaintiffs given that the case is in its initial stages. This court should therefore grant a temporary stay of this matter in its entirety pending the resolution of the criminal case. Factual background. This is a wrongful death case arising out of the death of Officer John O'Keefe on January 29, 2022. On June 9, 2022, the Commonwealth charged Karen Reed, Officer O'Keefe's girlfriend, with second-degree homicide, manslaughter while operating under the influence of alcohol, and leaving the scene of a collision resulting in loss of life. Reed pled not guilty to the charges. A trial went forward to the criminal case between April 16, 2024 and June 25, 2024, drawing significant attention from the media. The court ultimately declared a mistrial on July 1st. A second trial is scheduled to begin on January 27, 2025. On August 23, 2024, plaintiffs commenced this case against Ms. Reed, Waterfall, and CNC Hospitality, which is CF, CF McCarthy's, the other uh, establishment that they were at. So, plaintiff's complaint enumerates claims for wrongful death and negligent infliction of emotional distress against Waterfall, which is just ridiculous. Plaintiffs specifically allege that Waterfall served Ms. Reed alcoholic drinks while she was showing signs of intoxication. Waterfall anticipates that discovery in this matter will focus primarily on the events leading up to Officer O'Keefe's death. To that end, discovery will necessarily require testimony from the parties and third-party witnesses who were present with and or observed Ms. Reed and Officer O'Keefe on January 28, 2029. So anyone that was at Waterfall or CF McCarthy's is going to be probably able to, they, they can call them. Probably even the McCabe's or the uh, McAlberts later, because they 
leading up to the events that was part of their night was hanging out with those McAlberts. On October 2nd, 2024, Ms. Reed filed a motion to stay this matter pending resolution of the criminal trial via Superior Court Rule 9A, which mean, which remains pending. So that's the, um, that's Karen Reed filed a motion to stay also in this case because she's like, get out of here. I'm dealing with my own stuff right now. <laughs> In her motion, Ms. Reed argues that her Fifth Amendment privileges require staying this matter pending the resolution of the criminal trial. Ms. Reed further raises the same concerns Waterfall has regarding witnesses being required to testify during overlapping proceeding in the criminal and civil cases. Waterfall maintains that the interests of judicial economy favor staying this matter in its entirety pending the outcome of the criminal case in light of the significant overlap between the two cases. I'm going to back up because I skipped a um, footnote here. It says, for example, Rebecca Treyer, an employee of the Waterfall who was working on January 28th, was called to testify during the first criminal trial. Other employees of the Waterfall were also listed on the Commonwealth's witness list, so there might be more people that work at the Waterfall or C.F. McCarthy's that might have been called, but they weren't. So here's the argument. The court has discretion to grant a stay. The authority to stay proceedings is incidental to the power inherent to every court to control the disposition of the causes on its docket and economy of time and effort for itself, for counsel, and for litigants. Courts in Massachusetts often exercise their discretion to stay cases in light of parallel or related proceedings. There's so much I'm trying to skip over here because it's all case law. I don't want to read. Um, This analysis considers factors including, one, the overlap of the issues on the two cases, two, the status of the two cases, and three, private and public interests. As outlined below, these factors weigh in favor of staying this matter pending resolution of the criminal case. So the issues in this matter and the criminal case directly overlap and thus a stay will conserve the party's resources and promote judicial economy. As explained above, Ms. Reed has been criminally charged with inter alia manslaughter while operating under the influence of alcohol. In this case, Plaintiffs allege that Waterfall served alcohol to Ms. Reed while she was showing signs of intoxication. Discovery in this matter will inevitably involve testimony from employees of Waterfall and third-party witnesses who were present with and or observed Ms. Reed and Officer O'Keefe on the night prior to his death. Most, if not all, of those witnesses testified at the first criminal trial and will presumably be called to testify at the second trial allowing discovery and depositions to proceed in this case while the criminal case is pending will require these witnesses including but not limited to waterfalls employees and representatives to testify in overlapping proceedings staying this case will conserve the party's resources a stay will also promote judicial economy by obviating discovery disputes on issues that may impact the criminal case These factors weigh in favor of granting a stay pending the outcome of the criminal trial. C. The requested stay will not prejudice plaintiffs where the criminal case is scheduled for trial in less than four months and the discovery deadline in this matter does not require or does not expire until August 2026. So discovery, they can still be receiving discovery up until August 26. So they have plenty of time to stay this case they literally just wanted to because it was a mistrial paul o'keefe was like i'm gonna stick it to her and i'm gonna sue her that's what i think happened waterfall maintains that staying this matter pending the outcome of the scheduled criminal trial will not prejudice any party insofar as plaintiffs disagree and or agree that a brief stay is prejudicial to them, Waterfall submits any prejudice caused by the stay will be minimal given that the case is in its preliminary stages. 
Pursuant to the court's tracking order, discovery does not expire until August 17th of the year 2026. That's a while from now. Neither a trial date nor a pretrial conference has been scheduled. The criminal case, on the other hand, is scheduled for trial on January 27th, 2025, less than four months from now. Holy cow. In other words, the criminal case is well underway with an estimated time of completion in early 2025, giving the parties more than ample time to complete discovery in this matter following its conclusion. Moreover, the minimal prejudice to plaintiffs is outweighed by the undue burden on the defendants and third-party witnesses that may be required to testify in overlapping proceedings. As such, this factor also weighs in favor of staying this matter pending the outcome of the criminal case. This court should therefore grant a temporary stay of this matter in its entirety. Conclusion, wherefore, the Waterfall Bar and Grill requests that the court grant this motion and stay this matter pending the resolution of the related case. Well, what do you think the O'Keefe's say to that? They oppose it. Yeah. So the plaintiff's memorandum of law in opposition to defendant Waterfall Bar and Grill's motion to stay civil proceedings. Defendant Waterfall Bar and Grill, herein Waterfall, requests a stay here largely because allowing discovery to proceed at this juncture and on the eve of criminal trial will duplicate resources of both the parties and third-party witnesses that would be required to testify in both matters. Plaintiffs oppose defendant Waterfall's request because the potential for duplication of resources is overstated and does not outweigh the prejudice that will burden the plaintiffs should this case or should this court order a stay of the civil proceedings. First, the potential for duplication of resources fails to recognize that discovery in the civil case extends beyond the relevant inquiries of witnesses in the criminal case. Second, Waterfall's assertion that a brief stay poses little risk of prejudice to the plaintiffs is inaccurate. Not only is Defendant Reed using the media to poison the jury pool, but also any day, any delay risks the degradation of evidence, including witnesses. Get out of here. Come on now. You guys don't need to be doing this at this moment. You just want her money. That's all you see is money signs when you look at her. <sighs> yeah. So not only is Reed using the media to poison the jury, she's also uh, a, a delay risks the degradation of evidence, including witnesses' memories. Therefore, the purported concerns over duplication are outweighed by the hardship. No, it isn't. And substantial risk of prejudice plaintiffs would face should a stay be granted. The legal standard, the movement, the movement carries the heavy burden of establishing that a stay is warranted. A motion to stay proceedings is ordinarily a matter addressed to the sound discretion of the trial judge. Courts must weigh the interest of the plaintiff in proceeding expeditiously against the burden of the defendants. A general stay of all civil discovery is not by any means the best option available to the courts or to the litigants. Stays can and should be tailored to avoid undue prejudice. A court can allow civil proceedings to progress as much as possible without prejudicing the relative interests of the litigants. When a stay of proceeding is requested, the right to the parties to the civil action are to be considered as equal. The overall interest of the courts that justice be done may very well require that the compensation and remedy do a civil plaintiff should not be delayed. Okay, but if Waterfall, C.F. McCarthy's, and Karen Reed are all saying, can we wait until Karen Reed's trial is done? And those are the people that you're suing. Don't you think that a judge is going to probably say, yeah, that's probably wait because none of them are going to be ready in time. They're, they're telling me right now that it's they're waiting on discovery from probably the trial to take place. All right, so here's the argument. Defendant Waterfall overstates its concern that allowing civil discovery to proceed will force witnesses to testify in overlapping proceedings because witnesses can participate in both the civil and criminal matters without undue burden. Only a few of the witnesses relevant to Waterfall's liability here overlap. 
For example, many of the ownership and or staff of Waterfall are not expected to testify in Reed's criminal case, even though they are expected to testify in the civil case. Moreover, facts relevant to the civil matter for Waterfall employees' agents do not align with the civil matter, and the inquiry is expected to be wholly different in the civil case. The operative time relevant to Waterfall's liability, times of service, does not align with the relevant times in the, in the Reed criminal matter, time of Reed's drunk driving. Anecdotal testimony of Reed's visible intoxication. She never appeared visibly intoxicated ever at Waterfall from other inebriated patrons of the waterfall may not carry the same weight as bar staff who are supposed to be trained professionally to identify visible signs of intoxication. No one, not one freaking person said she showed any signs of visible intoxication, including the O'K or the McAlberts that she was with all night. The O'Keefe family also has compelling reasons to lock in testimony from Karen Reed, who seek not only to poison the jury pool, give me a break, with her regular communications with the media, reporters, and or bloggers, but also has one foot out of Massachusetts now that her house has sold. Oh, so I guess Karen Reed's house has sold. So now, now she's a flight risk because she sold her house. She sold her house so she could afford the second trial. And now she's a flight risk. They're using that against her. I loathe Paul O'Keefe and his family. And if you don't hate these people yet, you really should. You really, really should. Moreover, the risk of witness memories fading and or relevant witnesses from Waterfall moving on with their lives and becoming uncooperative is not insignificant. Here, as in Del... Del... Bali... Bali... A delay of discovery poses a real risk of irremediable loss of, mem of witness memory and a risk of witness unavailability. The resulting prejudice to plaintiffs' ability to prove their claims would be substantial, outweighing the defendant's reluctance to respond to the plaintiff's risk discovery requests. I don't know how that applies. <laughs> the O'Keefe family has a right to a timely resolution based on Waterfall's request. A stay should be, uh, here, could be indefinite. Why? Additional delays in the criminal trial's resolution, including another mistrial, a lengthy appeal, or other legal complications are real possibilities here. If the defendants received the requested stay, plaintiffs likely would be prejudiced by fading witness memories and delays in justice. That's it, because their memories are going to fade. That's your excuse for waiting like four months. You can't wait four months for the trial to conclude. Wow. Okay. Conclusion, this court should deny defendant Waterfall's request to stay these civil proceedings because overlap between the civil and criminal case is minimal and many of the issues relevant to the Waterfall's liability are not significant in the criminal matter. It is feasible for both to proceed concurrently without imposing undue burden upon witnesses or parties. If you think that it's not going to impose an undue burden on Karen Reed, you're out of your freaking mind. She's fighting for her life to stay out of prison right now. And your petty little money grab, Paul O'Keefe, is the least of her worries right now. To avoid prejudice based on witness unavailability, failed memories, and or Karen Reed's attempts to poison the jury pool. I laugh every time I hear that. Because who is the one that brought plants onto the jury? Not Karen. <sighs> so Karen's attempts to poison the jury pool through her public statements, this court should exercise its discretion to deny a stay of the civil case pending the criminal matter solution. Resolution, sorry. Yeah, so that's the O'Keefe's response. I despise them. Paul, more than anybody in that family. I don't think Peggy's very nice either. John O'Keefe, I don't, or John O'Keefe Sr., I don't despise, but he's still in on it. I don't know if he's really forcing, forced to be in on it or what, but I don't think he really thinks Karen did it. But yet he is listed, John O'Keefe. The second, 
Yes, because John Joseph O'Keefe the third is the victim, the deceased. Okay, so that's what I have for you guys. It's a short one, but there you have it. What do you think? Paul O'Keefe being his grifty self again. <laughs> Paulo Grift is what they call him on, on X. Paulo Grift. So that's I. This is nothing but a money grab to me. They don't need discovery until 2026. So waiting a few months for the trial to end isn't going to hurt them at all. How are they being burdened? You need to prove how you're being burdened by waiting. <laughs> In my opinion, they don't show how they were burdened by waiting a couple months. Unreal. Anyways, let me know what you think. I'm just just like I'm beside myself right now. I'm disgusted by the O'Keefe's. It makes me sick sometimes what they do. This being one of them. Another, you know, maybe bringing the perpetrator of taking John's life to court that day, potentially. The day of closing arguments when they brought Brian Albert, Jennifer McCabe, who I think is just as guilty of homicide as anyone who actually punched him. Uh, Colin Albert, Carrie Roberts, those four were invited by the O'Keefe's to stare down the jury while closing arguments were being had or being made. And individual jurors said that they felt intimidated. So it just, it like these dirty little tricks that they play. I just can't stand it. And I want it to end so bad. And I think this is just a frivolous lawsuit and it's dumb. And I don't think that Paul really believes that Karen did it. Do you guys think Paul really believes Karen did it? Let me know in the comments below and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care. Have a good one. Bye now.